hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about just how to install an SSD inside your new PS5. I already did a video about this last year when the console first came out but of course the feature wasn't enabled and now it is. A number of people are wondering about how exactly to do it. So in today's video I'm going to be taking the lid off the system, installing the SSD, installing a heatsink as well. I'll be talking a little bit about supported SSDs. I've got a dual camera setup here so hopefully everything is visible on screen and we're going to go through the physical installation of this SSD. It should be mentioned that as soon as you've got the SSD inside, the PlayStation, once you reboot it, will take care of the rest. So you don't have to do much in terms of software, but the hardware bit, some people seem to be finding quite intimidating, even though it's actually quite simple. So for today's video, what you're going to need is firstly, an SSD, obviously, and today I'm going to be utilizing the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. There are a number of supported SSDs ranging from the um, Gigabyte Aurora 7000S, the uh, WD Black SN850, the Samsung 980 Pro, and of course the king of the kings right now, the Fire Cuda 530. So you can get one of those, but you will also need a heat sink. Now a heat sink is a small panel that lives on top, I'll get that to the other camera as well, a heat sink is a small heat panel that assists the dissipation of heat from an SSD, because these SSDs do generate a lot of heat, but not all SSD heat sinks are created equal, and some of them are quite chunky indeed. So for this video, I'm going to be using the Eluteng heat sink here, I'll get that to both cameras, and the Eluteng uh, heat sink here, it's small enough that it will fit inside the panel here and put the lid on, and at the same time, make sure your heat sink, uh, your SSD is kept lovely and cool. It's around $10, I think it's about eight or nine quid here in the UK. It's very cheap and it arrives with both the thermal panels that I'll show you how to apply, and the screwdriver right there. So, you'll also need uh, a bigger Phillips head screwdriver as well, and again, there was lots of stuff online previously about you have to make sure you're in a well-lit room. It doesn't have to be that well-lit, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started. Again, I'm going to talk a lot more to the side camera here. So, the first thing we need to do is get our heatsink panel. First up, we get our heatsink. Again, that Elu Tang right there. I'm going to be talking to that camera again. Uh, we will be getting the heatsink out. So, lay that out. It is good to have a slightly rubberized surface, if I were you. Again, you can use bands like uh, to stop a lot of the conductive material on this. But as long as you've got no power around, I think you should be absolutely fine in the short term. So, first thing we need to do is get our heatsink panels. So again, they will be different depending on the system you use. But again, you can sometimes get heatsink panels that are in tiny little cubes like this one. But mainly, I do strongly recommend that you use like the larger one-piece panels there. One panel needs to go in the base of your heatsink there. So if I remove that, disconnect it, and then you just place it inside. Again, the adhesive has to be down, okay? So make sure the adhesive is on the bottom of that panel there to stop it falling out. And then when you get your SSD, again, in my case, the Sabrent, now the positioning of the label on the top will make a big difference. This one, I've removed that top label for a previous video, so it will be a lot smoother than that. And it's recommended that you look at the dip at the top there of that little connector, and you'll notice all heat sinks will have a dip to show you exactly which end have to go together. And just make sure that you line up that dip with the other hole. So like that there, make sure the dips are in alignment there. So they're lined up there. Generally, when you do put a heatsink into the PS5, do bear in mind that um, the connector there, you wanna make sure that it's on the right hand side that the little connector there is there. There's a tiny little hole there, but just make sure, as you see it there on screen, that, that connector is on that side. From here now, what we need to do is go our other heatsink panel, remove the plastic layer once again. And again, this one will have plastic layers on either side, because this is the one that's gonna have a thermal panel on the top. We remove the double-sided there, and we place that on the SSD. You can place it on the inside of the heat sink if you choose, but I personally always put it directly on the SSD first to make sure I know that it's covered. So this is how we look so far. We've got that connector there, and that heat sink will now be pushed down, uh, the connector 
will be covered now by our larger heating. Once again, we've got the dip there on screen. So all you do is you put that in alignment with the others. And there you have it. We've now got our heat sink applied on our SSD there. Now again, there are screw holes that you have to apply to put that into each of them there. But again, depending on the height of the SSD you use, you would have to be a little careful about how you line those up. But ultimately, they will go in. Sometimes you have to push it down a little bit to get those holes in place. And now rather than you guys watching me screw in all six of these, I'm just going to fast forward, but just make sure you screw in all of the included screws that your heatsink arrives with onto the side. So now our SSD is ready and we're all screwed in. The next thing we want to do is to prepare the PlayStation for the installation of this SSD. Now the next thing we need to do, pop that over there, is you get your PlayStation, as you see here, and place it with the PlayStation logo faced down. Now make sure your hand is where that logo is, so you know that that's going to be the furthest away from you. So you place it down, like so, and remember the PlayStation logo is at this corner here. Next up, place the console down like that, once again with your hand underneath the PS logo. Place this hand on top, your left hand on top of the corner that isn't the PlayStation logo corner, and place your other hand underneath. You need to raise this ever so slightly and pull back. This hand is just here to secure the rest of the console. So once again, lift it up, pull it back, and the lid comes off. It's not screwed in, and those hooks keep the system in place. So we're gonna put the lid down there. And what we need to pay attention to now is this bay right here. This is where our SSD is going to be installed. So next thing we need to do is to get our Phillips crosshead screwdriver that we mentioned earlier. And we have to remove that screw right there. Again, lefty loosey, righty tighty. There you go, that's old school, isn't it? We remove the screw that you see there. And as you see, we lift it up here from the side panel that comes out. And what we're greeted with here is that slot. As you see there, there's the slot down there. There is a screw, a black screw there that we're going to be using in a moment. And the connector is here at the top. So the next thing we need to do is to remove that screw that's inside there. Now underneath the screw, you're going to see there is a small metal circle. Now that metal circle is basically where this SSD is going to be lined up. So that small metal circle, stick it inside the circle marked 80. So of all of these circles, we have a circle there that's marked 80. That is the length of this SSD. So get that small circular piece. It should be there by default, but just in case, stick it in the circle marked 80. Then get your SSD inside the heatsink, line it up with the PlayStation slot there, as you can see, and then slot it inside. It should glide straight into that slot and just over that circle, as you can see there. That SSD is now connected inside there and our heatsink is on. The next thing we need to do is screw in that small screw that we just removed, which I'm fairly certain I just put over there. Put that there. We take the SSD screw, we pop it there on the top, and then we screw it in to secure our SSD. Again, as we screw it in, it will hold the SSD in place. And now we've got our SSD and heatsink installed inside our PlayStation. Now, whether you want to keep this closed and covered utilizing this panel here is up to you. There are larger heat sinks available for this system. I wish I had one here. One moment. Some people choose to use larger heat sinks like this one. But if you do take advantage of a large heat sink like this, then it will protrude from the cavity of the PlayStation. You will be able to put the plastic lid back on, but you won't be able to use this metal panel. Again, it doesn't really limit dust. It's only really to cover the pace. And me personally, I would use a larger heat sink as it dissipates more heat overall. So now we take our panel back and we secure it 
back into the slot that we've excavated. And again, it will fit straight in. We take our screw, we place the first screw, the one with the PlayStation logo on it. We grab our screwdriver and we screw this back in. And there you go, it's that straightforward to install an SSD inside there. Then we simply take our lid, use if you've got the disc version, the slot there and line it up with the disc bay. But otherwise you should be able to see the curvature of the chassis of the box here. Place that over the top, slightly underneath and slot it back on. It's that straightforward. And now we've installed the SSD inside our physical PlayStation. And that's really it. Once we install the SSD inside this system and you power the device up for the first time, it will acknowledge that an SSD has been installed inside the PlayStation. If you try to install an SSD before the SSD um, uh, bay activation, the system will encourage, uh, ask you to shut the system down and remove the SSD. But if you have the new software beta or there has been a recent update from PlayStation that enables that SSD slot, you'll be greeted with a test screen on that SSD to enable that bay. You go into the settings menu and from there, you'll be able to go into the storage manager and activate your SSD bay. But the physical installation is nowhere near as complex as people make it and i hope this video has helped you but otherwise thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed this video click like if you want to learn more click subscribe we're doing a whole feature series on storage for the playstation 5 and i hope you find this helpful but otherwise click like subscribe enjoy the video use the links in the description for all the compatible ssds and my full list of guides and i will see you next time